You know, I was sitting here thinking yesterday in the Oval Office, your dad was there with the veterans, and he said, he looked at their family members and said, you have good genes. I'm thinking, you do too. Oh. Everyone in this audience <laughs> loves you. The Thank son you. of the president, Thank obviously, you. Eric Trump, and his beautiful Thank wife, Laura. And you're passing these genes along. You're pregnant? Yes. This is so exciting. I can finally tell everybody I'm pregnant. I know. <laughs> So we have one, one more nice conservative, one more nice Republican in the world. That's a good thing, right, Dad? Uh, no, no, one more write-off, one more tax deduction. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, we heard from the Attorney General of the United States a couple of days ago when he was up on Capitol Hill. He said spying did occur. And a lot of Democrats are very upset that he would use that kind of language. He is just trying to figure out whether or not the spying was... Uh, properly authorized by the appropriate people. It did occur. I mean, it did occur, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the problem with these guys is they dug so deep that they found themselves, right? They, they, yeah. they, they, they kept on digging. They found a little mirror down there, and they saw their own face in the mirror. And, and you know, the nice thing about, about Barr is you finally, you finally have a grown-up in the room. I mean, you ha finally have a grown-up in the room who, who calls out this nonsense because, you know, my father always went around during the campaign. He talked about the deep state. The deep state guys does exist. By the way, it still exists, but it, 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 it does exist and it did exist. And you see all these emails between FBI people about insurance policies and other things. You see dossiers that were paid for by political candidates that were leaked through people's wives. I mean, it's really incredible. But and guess who the first person is that called him out? Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Way back when, and he's always right. You might not and like he it when so he much says heat it, for that. but he's always right. Right. Uh, you know, it was interesting. The day after the bar report came out, uh, you, you go on all the channels, you're watching CNN, not that I watch CNN or MSNBC, and, you know, well, we don't care about Russia. We want to talk about health care. I go, how disingenuous <laughs> is this? Right? You've been talking about Russia for the last three years, all day, every day. Then all of a sudden it comes out that the whole thing is a hoax, which is what my father and myself and Laura and Don and Ivanka and everybody else have been saying. Right. And all of a sudden they want to talk about health care. I mean, and guys, this is why they're going to lose. This is why they're going to lose in 2020. And, and they're also, you're part of, you're playing a major role in the re-election. Yeah. Where are you guys at? We're focused on the 18 Democrats. Where are you at with the fundraising? Where are you at with your plan as compared to two and a half years ago? Oh, we're, we're light years ahead of where we were two and a half years ago. I like to say that we were very grassroots in the 2016 campaign. And meaning we none of us yeah. had any idea really what we were doing. Uh, we're very streamlined. We're, we're really looking forward to 2020. And the reality is we're going to let the Democrats battle it out and see who their candidate is. We're not worried about anybody we've right. seen get in the race. We're poised to break fundraising records. We'd like to raise a billion dollars. Um, wow. So it, we're, we're, we feel great at, at exactly where what we are What number are you at now. right now? What number? We are, well, at the campaign directly, we've raised about $60 million. Wow. Um, but combined with the RNC, we're right. close to $200 million. Well, one of the top issues is going to be immigration uh, because sure. that has sure. also, always been one of your father's uh, core issues. Nancy Pelosi says she wants to find common ground on immigration, infrastructure, and prescription drug pricing, and apparently picked up the phone and called your dad a couple of days ago. Here's what uh, she did say, though, in the last 24 hours. It's complicated, but it isn't hard to do if you have good intentions. And I'm not giving up on the president on this regarding immigration. This has to happen. It's inevitable. And then went on to say later, the president, <laughs> though, is a fear monger. Yeah. He fueled the flame of insecurity about globalization and right. about immigration and all of that in the campaign. But if the economy is better for many of these people, I think that fear tactic would be diminished. So in other words, I want to work with him, but he's a bad guy. Yeah, well, you know, that, that, that's their MO. He's a racist. He's a sexist. All, all the things that he's exactly not. But I mean, just imagine how effective that we could be as a country. If you actually had people who were willing to work together, I know that's a utopian view, but if, if you sat down and really cared about prescription drug prices, something that is on top of my father's mind every single day, or you cared about solving the problem at the southern border, you know, you see all these incredible border patrol agents, and they always invite them, you know, Miss mm -hmm. Pelosi, please, please come down. You keep saying there's no problem at our southern border. Come down. Do one shift with me. Ride in the right seat of my car for one shift, and you won't be saying that there's not a problem. But... If there truly was sincerity to fix the problem, it could be done. But the problem is they just, they, they don't want my father to accomplish anything. Because you know what, he's been, so, he's been so effective that every time he accomplishes something, it's another mark that the American people see that 
a businessman was able to get done. And But Eric, I do think that they're looking to do a deal because they've done nothing in 100 days and they know with one branch they can't get anything done without the president. Right. So maybe, you know how about doing deals with people that might be adversarial. Maybe they, there is something to get done. And truthfully, it'd be good for them because honestly, their policies have failed. The Green, the green New Deal, $93 trillion, right? It's a total <laughs> joke. And no one in here could ever eat beef again. You couldn't drive your car. You couldn't, you couldn't fly home this afternoon. I mean, you see some of the policies that are coming out and it's, it, I mean, they're disastrous. And I'm telling you, this is not what America stands for. It's not what the American people are going to vote for. And right. I, I really, I really do hope they come to the table um, for all the right reasons. Well, let's see. All right. Yeah. Maria is in the audience today. Maria, where are you? All right, right back there, second row. What's your question for Eric and Laura Trump? I just want to say congratulations and thank you. Uh, congratulations to the baby and thank you to your family for all you're going through. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I think I can speak for all of us here. We wish you the best. We pray for your dad. And we just want to know, is he ready? He was born ready for 2020. Yeah, I was with him on Tuesday. Yes, he's ready. And guys, I said it before. We're going to win this thing again. I'm telling you, we're going to win this again. America needs it. America deserves it. And um, right. and he's doing just an unbelievable job. He's doing an unbelievable job. What about job, the job right? you're doing? You're running a major co a corporation while watching your dad as president <laughs> taking live questions yeah. on national television. How are you doing that? Yeah, we don't sleep much, Brian. I think, <laughs> I think you know but To that. her point, does it get a... How, how, do y'all really thick skin? Because every day you turn on... Yes. I mean, you know what? How do you Honestly, get through that? That has to be so Ainsley, stressful. We, we all know that we're fighting on the right side of history. We all sleep well at night knowing that we're behind a man who is leading this country in the right direction, who will go down in history as one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. And so we know we're doing the right mm -hmm. thing and fighting for the right Does thing. Does it ever get to your dad? Listen, you have to understand it for what it is, right? And, and all it is is it's, it's the most vicious game in the world, right? If, if you really compartmentalize it, it's the most vicious game in the world. We walked into a system that they did not want us in. They did not want my father they there. Still they still don't. This, of course they don't. And, 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 and honestly, and, and so what do they do? They lash out and they make up conspiracies and they harass and they subpoena and they do this and they do that when the guy is single-handedly focused on trying to fix this country. He's the one guy in the world who did not need this job, right? He's a billionaire from, from yeah. New York. He didn't need this job. He didn't need to get punched in the face every single day by, by all these lunatics. And he, he, <laughs> honestly, he, he, he did it because every single day he'd, he'd read the paper. I, I used to watch him. It was amazing. But he'd be reading the paper, and he'd open up. You know, U.S. gives $150 billion to Iran, including $1.7 billion in cash flown in cargo planes. And he'd be sitting there shaking his head. Guys, what, what, the, what the hell are we doing? What are we... What are we doing here? The educational system in this country is ranked 30th in the world. What, how are we not number one? We're America. Or we can't fly our fighter jets around. You know, we don't have enough parts for them. So they're going to museums to steal parts for fighter that, planes. And, and, you're not, and you're not exaggerating. We were. Don, you're here as well. Uh, Don, do you have a... Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go to the window side. There's Don. Hey, Don, you have a question? I do. Um, interested in knowing what you do know and believe about the young people ages 18 to 25 and their political beliefs and how the Republican Party is going to approach these, this, you know, very sensitive and critical group of young people for the next election. Well, you would actually be very surprised to know that there, there really are a lot of Republican young folks in our country. A lot of times, like many people, they don't feel like they can speak up and, and share their views because if you're in college, college campuses have now become bastions of, of liberal ideology and, um, and we see the, the violence, unfortunately, that does happen. Um, we are at the campaign are very focused on uh, our coalition's teams. So one of the things that we are focused on are, are the young votes in this country, making sure we get the information to people out there about socialism, which the other side is running on, and how detrimental that would be for their future and the future of this country. So I think it's about educating people, exposing them to it. Um, Charlie Kirk at Turning Point USA does an incredible job with this, too. So we got a lot of great people fighting on our team, but, but we really just have to get the get the message out there about what, what this means for our country and why they should be voting for Republicans. And Eric, you disagree. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I totally did. No. I, listen, conservatism, right. I think, on college campuses is, is, is also changing, right? You went from a point where it's uncool, and now it's, you, you're actually see, seeing it rise in college yeah. campuses. I mean, uh, Charlie's done a great All job. Right. You've said that, but, yeah. but you are seeing these... Well, bastions All take right. form, and it's powerful. It's become very powerful. Eric and Laura, thank you very much. We know you have a lot to do. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, okay. the Trumps.
Congratulations.